and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. While Jesus was blessing them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven. Praise be to God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, who was killed by nailing him to a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as Prince and Savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins. When this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who has gone into heaven, and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Because Jesus lives forever, he is able to completely save those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Ascended Lord, we confess that although you promise to be with us always, yet we doubt your presence in our lives and your love and provision for us. We do not live with our hearts always ready for your coming again in glory. Have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to our lasting life. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Therefore, upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, and in the stead and the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
let us pay for faith to trust that our risen and ascended Lord abides with us always. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The reading from the book of Acts for the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after the Ascension, is from the first chapter. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a song of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from the first, second, and third chapters of 1 John. St. John writes, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from every sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. 
He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from today's epistle reading. The Apostle John writes, We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The book of Exodus records that the prophet Moses once asked the Lord, Please show me your glory. Just once, Moses wanted to see the Lord, not by way of a burning bush or a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire, but to really see the Lord face to face. But the Lord replied, My face you cannot see, for no one may look on me and live. Have you ever heard the expression, if looks could kill? Well, God's look can kill. In the old westerns, they say, there's not room in this town for both of us. God is perfectly holy and righteous, and we are utterly sinful and wicked. And in this case, opposites do not attract. For God's holiness and our sinfulness, God's righteousness and our wickedness, are so mutually exclusive that there's not room for both of us. So much so that if we sinners were to just look upon the Lord in his perfect glory, we would be struck down dead. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The good news is God's gaze upon you has the power not only to kill and destroy, but also to forgive and restore, to transform and glorify. As we say in the benediction, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You've heard of looking at the world through rose-colored glasses? Well, God looks at the world through red-colored glasses, stained red with the blood of his Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not counting men's sins against them. This is a filter for a camera called a UV filter because it filters out the ultraviolet light. God looks upon you through a filter, the filter of the cross. God looks upon you through the filter of his son's sacrifice for you, the filter of his son's blood. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from every sin. God looks upon you not just through rose-colored glasses, but through red-colored glasses, stained red with the blood of his son. And the blood of his son's sacrifice for you filters out all your sin. As Paul says in Colossians, he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. God's gaze upon you has the power not only to kill and destroy, but also to forgive and restore, to transform and glorify. Right now you are already holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. And in heaven, your transformation will be complete. For by the power of the Lord's transforming gaze upon you, 
you shall actually be like him, perfect, holy, righteous, forever free from all sin. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. We are curious about what heaven will be like, and we are frustrated because the Bible doesn't give us as much detail about heaven as we want to know. That's because heaven is totally beyond anything we can comprehend. The essence of heaven is something no one still living has ever experienced before. We shall see him as he is. Then we shall see face to face. That is the essence of heaven. That is what heaven is all about. The ancients called it the beatific vision. To see God face to face. And by looking upon him, to be transformed. To be like him. Paul expresses the transforming power of the beatific vision in 2 Corinthians. We who all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory. You see, the radiance of God's glory, God's perfection, God's holiness is so powerful that when you see him face to face in heaven, you will perfectly reflect the glory of his holiness. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, holy, righteous, without sin. As Jude says, he is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault. We shall be like him, living forever, no more death or grieving. As Jesus promises, they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. We shall be like him, with our resurrected bodies perfected and glorified. As Paul says in Philippians, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. We shall be like him. No more of the pain and sorrow, disappointment and frustration, crying and sighing that you experience in this life. As John says in Revelation, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. We shall be like him, with perfect knowledge and understanding of all things. All your questions about this life finally answered. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians, Now I know in part, then I shall know fully. We shall be like him, with total happiness, joy, and peace. Isaiah says, They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. And Psalm 126 says, 
Then will our mouths be filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. We shall be like him. Paul sums up all the joys that await you in heaven in 1 Corinthians. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Sometimes in this life, there is no help, no hope, no healing for the hurts that we experience here. Set your hearts on things above. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. He was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. come forward at this time. Dear friends in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, Lift up your hearts to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. 
Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism when you were born again as his beloved child? If so, answer, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures to be faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you desire to be a member of this congregation? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend in this congregation to faithfully worship, hear the word of God, and receive the Lord's Supper? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, the help of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God, and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even unto death? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession of faith and the Holy Christian Church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and with the various gifts God has given you? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession, I acknowledge you as members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation and invite you to participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Devon, Canada. Not here with us today is Lita uh, England. William Miles. Carl and Cynthia Carroll. Sam is on the office. Jeff and Autumn Medley, Jordan, Hannah, and Micah. Kevin and Don Irwin and Jessica. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. 
Lord Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, hear the prayer for your Church throughout the world, that we, together with all your faithful people, may ever serve you in our lives and confess you before the world. Ascended Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, who was and is and is to come, the Almighty, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, head over everything for the church, hear our prayer for the nations of the world, that being subject to your gentle rule, we may live in peace. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Man, who according to humanity was tested in every way just as we are. Hear our prayer for our brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow, that they may find their comfort in you. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the loving good shepherd of your people, we lift up to you those mourning the loss of loved ones and those suffering physical injuries, and emotional trauma from the tragedy in Texas. In this time of trouble and sorrow, be their refuge and strength and ever-present help. Give wisdom to the authorities as they investigate and seek to prevent such tragedies. Watch over us and our loved ones, we pray, and daily deliver us from such evil. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, which is your body, we thank you for bringing into this family of faith Devin, William, Lita, Kevin, Donna, Jessica, Carl, Cynthia, Taylor, Kendall, Stan, Sandra, Jeff, Autumn, Jordan, Hannah, and Micah. Let their fellowship with this congregation be a blessing both for them and for us. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, with whom live the spirits of those who depart in faith, as we observe Memorial Day, we give thanks for all the saints who have gone before us into heavenly glory, especially those who serve to defend our freedom and most of all those who lay down their lives in this noble cause. As we remember, dear departed loved ones, comfort us with your promise of the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, whoever lives to make intercession for us, Hear the silent prayers we each bring before you now for the longings and hopes of our own hearts and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Ascended Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we gratefully remember your sufferings and death for our salvation. Rejoicing in your victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from your ascension to the right hand of the Father, where you are exalted as Prince and Savior, and ever intercede for us as our own High Priest. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's ascension to the right hand of God the Father, let us pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the service, the new members are asked to come forward for a group photo. God the Father, who has given his Son the name that is above every name, 
strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the Church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.